Hi, I'm Tracy Dufresne, Manager of Hospitality Workforce Development here at Rhode Island Hospitality Association. In this video, I'm going to take you through a step-by-step -step presentation to help you better understand food costing, ways to manage it, and how to drop more money to the bottom line. Sometimes you are not aware of issues until it's too late. Discovering issues early is just one of the many benefits to managing food costs. It will also help to create a culture of cost awareness amongst your staff. Food cost also helps to put the business owner in control of their operation. It is important for you to first have a full understanding of what food cost is. Food cost, by definition, is the cost of all the ingredients you use to prepare the menu items that you sell during a given period. Food costs and sales may go up and down, but they do so in direct proportion. This means if sales go down, less food should be ordered. If managed correctly, your food cost goals can be met and even exceeded. Typically, your food cost goal is measured by percentage. However, you must first understand how to calculate food cost dollars. To calculate your food cost dollars, first add the value of your beginning inventory and your purchases and subtract the value of your ending inventory to get the total food cost dollars. Here's an example. Uncle Lim's food cost. Starting inventory was $10,000. He purchased $5,000. His ending inventory was $5,000. So add your starting inventory and your purchases minus your ending inventory. That's gonna equal $10,000 in total food cost dollars. In order to calculate your food cost percentage, you must know your net sales. Take your food cost dollars, which we just calculated, and divide it by net sales, not gross sales. Make sure to use your net sales. Let's use the last example and figure out the food cost percentage. Uncle Lim's food cost. Food cost dollars was $10,000. We're gonna divide that by the net sales of $32,000. And that's gonna give us a total food cost percentage of 31 0.25%. The counting period is determined by you. It could be weekly, monthly, or even daily if you really wanted to. Typically, this is conducted monthly. It is important to know the cost per serving of every menu item. This will give you a price point on which to charge your customers and make a profit. Before we do the math of it all, it is important that you take into consideration that every item is not going to have a huge profit margin. The higher end items that you sell, the higher your food cost will be. This is why you balance out your menu. You can maintain your desired food cost by mixing expensive items that are prone to price fluctuations with items that have more stable prices. Keep in mind that the cost of some expensive cuts of meat can approach 50% of your menu price, while the cost of your appetizers and desserts is much lower. So your gross profit margin on those items can stabilize the low margin on pricier ones like the steak. Balanced menus will help you achieve a decent profit margin. So go ahead and include some fresh lobster and beefs on your menu but balance it with the less expensive chicken, pasta dishes, and soups of the day. Let's look at a high-end item and a cheaper item to compare costs. Johnny's Burger Bar. To calculate your food cost per serving or menu item, find the sum of the ingredient cost per serving. Be sure to include every ingredient in your calculation to get an accurate cost. In this example, Johnny's Burger Bar breaks down one of their signature burgers by the serving. As you can see, they counted everything from the bun to the tomato to the potatoes. The cost per serving 
is $4.40. They have then charged the menu price of $14. Add all of the ingredients, divide by the menu price, and that equals your food cost percentage. In this example, $4.40 divided by $14 equals 31% food cost. Not bad, right? Let's go over the more expensive version. Steve's Steakhouse is a high-end steakhouse. Their cost is higher due to the menu selections. This is where menu balance is key to ensure there is a profit being made. In this example, we have an eight ounce filet mignon with all of the fixings. As you can see, this is a much larger food cost item. Steakhouses can run a food cost percentage close to 38% while a restaurant that serves primarily pasta might run somewhere around 28%. In this example, Steve's Steakhouse is running a 54% food cost. This is a clear example of why menu management is so important. Now that we know the math, let's talk about how you can control food costs through your menu by cross utilization and ways to eliminate some extra costs. Ask yourself this question. Do you need that plate garnish or drink garnish? If you are not sure, observe plates as they come back from your guest. You might be surprised and you might say, yes, I wanna keep that garnish and this is okay. Just include it in your math when you're pricing out the dish. Lemons are currently about 27 cents each. So not a lot, however, when you add that up, if you use 10 lemons a day between the food and bar drinks, you added $2.70 and now times that by 30, that equals $81 a month. You probably go through more lemons than that too. Water with lemon is free to guest, but not to you. That was an obvious example, but how about ketchup? Does everyone get ketchup with their fries? Do they use it? Try using ramekins instead of a bottle of ketchup and watch the money go to the bottom line. How about A1 steak sauce? Same idea as the ketchup, except A1 steak sauce is 87 cents an ounce. If a guest wants sauce, you're going to bring it to them, right? By having your servers ask if a guest would like sauce, instead of just bringing them out, make a huge difference in the cost of these items. The other way to have the food cost control by way of your menu is to utilize items from multiple dishes. This really makes a difference. If you bring in crab because one of your entrees calls for crab, but you have no other dishes with crab on your menu, you're taking a huge chance on that one dish. If it doesn't sell, you're gonna have so much crab, you're gonna have to drop the price of the dish, throw it out, all sounds like cost to me. So why not make multiple dishes that include crab throughout your entire menu? Here's a few examples. Crab cakes, crab stuffed haddock, crab chowder, and I'm not even a chef. I'm sure you're thinking of a ton more dishes you can make with crab meat. Portioning is key, but it has to be done right and consistently. You cannot expect your staff to be portioning the right way if you do not give them the tools that they need. Portioned items should be your high cost items. For example, proteins, cheeses, fries. These are all frequently used items and they cost a lot of money. The way to be successful with portioning is portion ahead of time. On the fly, when something is not portioned, you're gonna get all kinds of weights. Over, under. Under is also not what you're looking for because your guests will notice and it's just not a good practice to have. Using the right tools and ensuring that they work correctly is important. If you use a scale, but it was not calibrated, then it's not accurate. Using scoops, portion cups, spatulas, guide knives, ladles, and calibrating your scales, 
you're already on your way to success. While it is ideal to portion as much as you can, some items are just not cost effective to have pre-portioned. These items are typically low cost and would actually cost more for the labor, the portioning cups, than it does to just have a utensil on the line. Such as mashed potatoes, ice cream scoops, we keep those on the line as we go. They measure as we go. Small wares cost upfront, but think about how much money you will save from buying a $10 scoop. If you're really trying to work on your food costs, try putting a scraping station where the dressings bottles go before they get thrown out. This will help determine who needs training on the art of saving pennies to make dollars. Let's look at an example of a dinner salad comparison. Steve's Steakhouse and Johnny's Burger Bar have the same house salad with all the same purchase prices and they both sell the salad for $6. Steve's Steakhouse has dressing on the side in a measured ramekin. They use a cup to measure the lettuce and the cheese is pre-portioned. The cost of their salad is $2.98. Johnny's Burger Bar did not portion any items and does not have the right tools in place. His cook used six ounces of lettuce, two and a half ounces of cheese, and three and a half ounces of dressing. So the cost to make the same salad went from $2.98 to $4.33. That is a dollar 35 out of your pocket. The guest doesn't pay you more because you gave them more. You are not dealing with dollars here. You're dealing with pennies and you have to make every penny count. Let's look at Johnny's dinner salad a little closer. If the food cost of the portion salad is $2 and 98 cents and his salad is being made at $4.33, he is losing $1.35 per salad. Let's say he sells 20 salads per day for seven days a week. That is $27 a day of waste. In a week, that's $189. Now a month is $810 a month and that's only 20 salads. You probably sell way more than that because it comes with your entrees. $810 is a lot of money. And that's just one example of not following specifications set in a recipe card can throw off all of your costing. So now that we know how to calculate food cost, we know that portioning is the key to success in food cost and menu pricing is critical when we're talking about this topic. Let's go back to the beginning. Controlling food cost in purchasing. Purchasing is where it all begins. There are many steps in the purchasing process, but the first step is to designate who is responsible for ordering. This person is usually the chef, the kitchen manager, or even the general manager, as it is a very important job to ensure the business is well balanced with the product needed. The first step in ensuring that ordering is correct is to know when your deliveries are scheduled and how much time is in between your deliveries. Have what you need plus an extra day worth of food, but not days worth. Over and under ordering has negative effects on your business and your staff. Organization is one of the main components of ordering. Your food storage areas should look like a grocery store. Everything in its place, and this will help avoid over-ordering and under-ordering. Product mixes are an accurate account of what has been sold for a period of time in which you set. This is a great tool to see what sells and what does not. 
This report runs directly off your computer system. On the right, you'll see a sample order guide. This includes PAR levels. These should always be used on your order guide and change regularly. Trends of food are ever changing, so make sure this reflects in your PARs. On hands are also a great way to see the trends in ordering as they are happening. Perception is reality with a lot of items that we deal with, but not with food costs. This is just reality. Keeping on hands helps create new PARs and alert you to problems prior to you even noticing. Holidays and events must be on top of your mind when doing the ordering. Think about it. Mother's Day is a busy day and we're always prepared for it. But are you prepared for the high school's graduation or the dance recital in your town? Being aware is part of setting great parts. Do you have a limited time off or menu? What is on that menu? What is the trend of that menu? They don't always work the best. What's good on paper doesn't always translate in food cost. Upon receiving your orders, you want to have the actual invoice in your hand to check the quantities and to see if you were short an item on your truck. You will also wanna check quality and temperatures. But let's go back to the invoice first. Once you obtain the invoice, check your quantities compared to the weights on the individual boxes and what it says on the invoice. You can see in the example of prime rib, the cost of prime rib is $14.25 a pound. If you ordered 30 pounds, but you only received 28.75 pounds, you're already operating at a total waste loss of $17.81. And that's only one truck. So check your actual weights versus what is on the invoice. You also want to check the quality of your product, especially produce. Fruit goes bad quickly. So open every single box. Five minutes might save you a lot of money. Check the temperatures of high priced items. This could lead to bigger problems in the long run, such as food safety problems. Remember, when you're taking temperatures, do not puncture any holes or damage the packaging. They will not return it for credit. Make sure whoever you put in charge of receiving your orders is fully trained and knowledgeable. Getting credit is instrumental in battling food cost. Every food vendor has a specific format on how to get credit. Work with your providers to find out their systems and how you can gain credit for your food. Follow up to make sure that credit is received on your end and reflected in your reports. Food inventory management is the practice of tracking these often perishable items as a way to prevent loss, measure profitability, and food costs. This also helps explain what supplies and money are being used for within the establishment. Make sure during the counting process, you also make note of whether inventory loss was caused by spillage, employee mistakes, staff meals, or even theft. Inventory is a diary for your restaurant. If it is done well, you should be able to paint a picture of the losses and earning of each shift, day, week, month, or even the year. Here are four important terms to get familiar with. Sitting inventory. This is usually measured in dollars worth or the physical amount. Sitting inventory describes the amount of product businesses have in their restaurants. It is best to use just one of these units of measurement and stick to it consistently. Think of your spices that are not used that much. If you count differently every time, there will be a discrepancy. Depletion. This term describes how much product is used over a period of time that you set. This could be monthly, it could be weekly. The way this is usually worked out is by using sales reporting data in the POS system. Usage. As the name implies, usage is a calculation to work out the amount of dollars worth or product businesses have used 
over a specific period of time. Again, you set this time. The variance is the number that usually describes the difference between the cost of a product and the product usage cost. It shows how much of the product must be accounted for. For example, if the business inventory is down $60 worth of cheese at the end of the day, but the POS system states that we only sold $55 worth of cheese, the cost variance for the cheese for the day is 5%. So you have a 5% waste of cheese. Here are some key ways to help manage effective inventory. Minimize staff members to track inventory. It is best to assign the role of taking inventory to a small amount of staff. However, it is a good practice to have two people count at a time, as four eyes are better than two. Stick to your schedule. Being consistent with a schedule means that there is more of a chance to understand how ingredients and supplies are being used. If a schedule is done right, specific areas can be looked at closely and accurately, which means adjustments can be made to improve as necessary. First in, first out. This method is a great way to reduce food spoilage and optimize your food on your shelves. Organize your coolers, dry storage, freezers, so that items received first are in the front and they're the first out. Create a food waste sheet. A food waste sheet can make inventory tracking more accurate as it shows where your food is going outside of your sales. Tracking food waste can mean there is more opportunity to plan shipments, identify training needs, and find ways to purchase less or find better use for your ingredients. Make the most of surplus ingredients. To avoid wasting extra ingredients that are going bad soon, try and come up with new ways to use them in existing recipes or create a new recipe around them. Let your guests know about the menu changes as this can lead to potential sales. Study your previous inventories and trends. Past inventories hold key information on what could save money and increase efficiency. Look into what items were overused or underused to decide what is the best to order in your future. Waste happens in a restaurant, it's inevitable. But the fact that 85% of the food used in a typical restaurant is simply thrown out, that's an issue. And though a waste log can't stop that waste from happening altogether, it can definitely help curb it. When your staff knows you're not paying attention, they know they can get away with a lot more. An extra shot of vodka for that attractive customer, easy. A drop sandwich tossed away without anyone knowing it. Steaks slipped into coat pockets to bring home later. Everyone's doing it. But with the waste log around and set processes and training in place for your employees to keep it updated, they're going to know you're paying attention. It gives them the perception that they're being monitored more closely which will make them more careful when handling food. They'll be more diligent. They'll think twice before bringing food home with them. With no waste log in place, your kitchen will stay a free for all. No, really, your staff will just assume they can bring home food for free. And that's definitely not part of your benefits package. When to use a food waste log. There are a lot of different instances where food waste log could come in handy, such as leftover food at the end of the shift. This is referring to various hot or cold items that can't be used for the next day, like french fries, mashed potatoes, spilled or dropped items. It happens. People drop food, they spill a tray, but it needs to be tracked. Staff training and menu tastings. It's helping your staff better understand your menu, but you're not making money on it, so it needs to be noted. Kitchen mistakes. 
burnt food and overcooked food. They need to know it is okay and that this will happen, but it needs to be documented. Refire and remix. Same concept. Staff meals. Make sure that all staff meals are tracked through the POSI system, whether they're paying for the meal or it's a comp meal. If you are fully comping meals for your staff, make sure they have limitations. Can they eat lobster or should it be that pasta? You decide. Leftovers from an event or a banquet. Perfect example here is all you can eat chicken family style. You gave them some food, they didn't eat it. Document it. Now that we've documented on our food waste log, what do we do with this waste log? The first thing is to actually use it. It is crazy how many restaurants simply ignore this food waste log. Always have it readily available. Your entire staff should know the process. This keeps the waste log consistent. No nicknames for food, no skimping on quantities. Make precision and process important and your staff will follow through. Then as you notice profitability issues in your restaurant, your waste log should become the first thing that you check. Did you run out of pickles because you didn't order enough or because a waiter dropped a jar of them? Is your staff sandbagging wings for your Tuesday night wing special? Maybe it's time to cut down. Are you consistently out of mahi mahi and there's nothing on your waste log? An employee may be taking it home. You won't know unless you use this log, enforce it, and create a culture of accountability for food control. Food cost takeaways. Manage food waste. Keep an accurate and consistent inventory. Use your order guides accurately and to the fullest ability. Know your restaurant trends. Manage menu items. Calculate food cost constantly. Train your staff is key and observe food waste coming back into the kitchen. These takeaways are a great way to control food costs in the restaurant and they are essential to the health of your restaurant business. Food cost is always going to be a factor in the industry. However, it is how you manage it that will make the difference. The biggest component of this entire topic is that you must be invested in your business as does your team. None of these systems will work if you do it alone and do not hold your team accountable.